<clears throat> Hello. Um, today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite films of all time, um, which is 60 years old this year. Um, and I've mentioned this before here and there, but I haven't really gone in depth, you know, just discussing it overall as a film. And um, it's one of those movies where, you know, it's such a masterpiece. I'm like, I, I don't know what I can all say that's brand new. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just give my experience of watching this for the first time. I was like a teenager and then ever since then. Um, and the film that I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> is Lawrence of Arabia. Um, I got this uh, this year. Uh, you know, it's a limited uh, uh, steelbook edition. Um, and of course, steelbooks, you know, you don't always have to get them because some steelbooks aren't all that great, but this was something that I didn't really know about until later this year. And, um, the wasn't as, uh, uh, many you could really get, uh, from where it was originally sold because it was a limited time. And, um, <clears throat> luckily, you know, they were able, able to find it where it was as, at a ridiculous, stupid price, because I've seen these go for a few hundred bucks, because, again, this was a limited-time 4K version, which, of course, has the Blu-ray. And, um, yeah, uh, Lawrence of Arabia came out December 1962. Really the debut of Peter O'Toole for the whole world. Even though this isn't technically his very first film in his career... Uh, the few films he did prior to this, they were primarily just in England, and uh, until, you know, later on, like, DVDs and such became a big thing, and now with streaming and everything. Um, unless you were in England, you were never really going to hear or know about those films he was in. So this is the first film people knew of the existence of Peter O'Toole. Because, you know, outside of those few films, he was primarily also doing plays. And this film also has uh, Alec Guinness, Anthony Quinn, Jack Hawkins, Jose Ferrer, Anthony Quayle, uh, Claude Rains, Arthur Kennedy. And this was also Omar Sharif's first major film also, if not his first. Um, and this was directed by David Lean, who made... Bridge on the River Kwai, which is an excellent film also, but I put this above that, and um, this is my fourth favorite film of all time, um, and I also have the DVD version here, um, and this is pretty cool, though, it's interesting, the 4K version, though, um, you know, there's the Blu-ray, and the special features on the second Blu-ray, but then for the 4K, you've got the feature film on two discs. Now, I might want to put this being disc one and disc two, but I just have it like this for now, because that's how it has been, and it's just been fine for me. I do like how this is. That's pretty cool, I think, for like uh, multiple discs like this, instead of just piling them all on top of each other. That's kind of annoying, I think. But it's weird how the 4K, because 4K Blu-ray discs, I would think they would have more, <clears throat> you know, more memory than the standard Blu-ray. And the standard Blu-ray disc has the entire film on one disc. And also the 4K disc, again, it's two discs, which... On one hand, I guess it kind of gives you more bang for your buck, but I don't know. It's just weird, especially when I have also here the DVD from 2002, which has really no special features. Um, but it has the entire film on one disc, and it is the same length. 
227 minutes and where is the runtime here yes 227 minutes yes same same length as the as on here you know has the entrance and uh, the overture entrance and exit music um, of course also has a intermission but yeah this Yeah, this just, it's interesting how that is the case, but also wanted to show the 50th anniversary big box set that I've got here. It's limited edition collector's packaging, 88 page coffee table book, with rare behind the scenes photos, an individually numbered 70 millimeter mounted film frame. And has uh, comes with three Blu-ray discs, as well as the soundtrack of the film on CD, with pr two previously unreleased tracks. And um, yeah, the third disc on this, the third Blu-ray disc, was actually just for this. You could get the two-disc Blu-ray without all this stuff. And none of the other special like features that the third disc has. However, an advantage that this version has the second Blu-ray on here with the special features has all the stuff that this did not or this had on the third disc. So, if you m didn't get this like ten years ago, but you're able to get this, and hopefully, I. I know there was stuff about uh, another 4K version of the Lawrence of Arabia that some people complained about, uh, like for the 4K version. This has the also the unused international prologue on the 4K disc, so I don't know. Maybe that's part of the reason why it's on two 4K discs, but even then, that doesn't make too much sense uh, to me, at least to some degree. So I'm going to put this here. Yeah, this has all the stuff that is on here. So if you didn't get this, but you got this, then you've got all the contents uh, on the that were on all three discs, um, minus the soundtrack. Though I'm sure you're you could find the soundtrack somewhere else. And take this off. Well, unfortunately, this was kind of beaten a bit, but you know considering that was the only major kind of big damage that that had. I think that's all right. And my grandmother actually got this for me because um, about 10 years ago, yeah, it was like 10 years ago, we all like got to Barnes & Noble and uh, as a family, which would happen here and there around late November, um, December, which... I'm filming this uh, on the last day, but how about this? So it's from Yoda to Chewbacca. There you go. Um, but yeah, um, around late December, uh, early uh, December, we uh, we would sometimes go out and uh, to places like Barnes and Noble, for instance, because cool books and some decent discounts going on and um and i had seen this here and there throughout the year it was always a hundred plus dollars and you know you know i wasn't really thinking <laughs> i would love to have gotten it but i'm like i probably won't be able to really get that but i noticed it was marked down i made some comments not actually expecting anything to happen just noticed like oh it's marked down and like 50 percent off i believe and she had like an also another get another 10 percent because she was a barnes noble uh member so she get she gets another 10 percent off so she's able to get like 60 percent off of it so um i think that's part of the reason she got this for me i didn't expect this at all um i got in a couple movies as well as a 
buck or two. But I didn't expect really anything, so that was kind of good and nice. And so I not only love this film, but also the fact that um, grandmother got this for me when I didn't expect it. Was, it also makes this set even more special to me than it probably already would. Just the uh, it was just yeah, it was just a very unexpected like gift. And yeah, um, you'll pull it out like this, and and you have the book here. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna go through the book really too much with you, um, but yeah, here's some cool stuff. Behind the scenes pictures. There he is, D. E. Lawrence. Or, or, and there he is on the the real one, and then the film version. Yeah. A lot of people commented how Peter O'Toole had a pretty good uh, resemblance to the real man. Apparently, you know, uh, a, a critic said that if he was any prettier, they'd have to rename the entire movie Florence of Arabia, which is pretty fun. And um, here is the authentic film frame. It's at the end of the film when they seem to have gotten what they needed, like for like at the, or they're having a meeting after like basically conquering what they intended to, I guess, get like what was theirs and all that. If you've seen the film, you know what this is. But yeah, it's at the end of the movie. Uh, Lawrence is there, but he, you don't see his face because he's in he's dirty, right? white with some stains um but yeah um sorry for that i'm blinding myself now that's great um <clears throat> and i have shown you this before uh, the blu-ray and the cds and um, here's the track listing soundtrack and the film and uh, and the second and third disc third disc only available in this set but now all the special features are on putting the track listing back are now on on that version so I might keep uh, <clears throat> this Blu-ray in here, um, just because um, I think, you know, for all the special features, I might just, you know, uh, watch that version. But I don't know. I might. I just. I don't know. I might just get this out here and there, just for the. Uh, Uh, I just might. Um, yep, here we go. I'm, <laughs> I'm putting everything backwards. And now, I mentioned I wanted to sort of talk about my experience with this film because, you know, people talk about the plot and, you know, it's about his life overall uh, in World War II. Or World War One. sorry, not World War II. There's so many movies, though, that take place in World War 
two and World War One isn't talked about as much. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it's during uh, yeah he's in the like the you know, Middle East uh, stationed and in the film he uh, encounters and talks to people there in in Arabia and has a hand in. Uh, in the film, getting uh, helping like the tribes be able to, you know, get back like land that was once theirs and that was controlled by another army. And then, <clears throat> you know, the British government has their own interest in this in the military. And so they're kind of letting, you know, Lawrence do all these things. That way, you know, they can, um, you know, have yeah i don't want to spoil the film on the off chance you haven't seen it but this is such a classic film i think most people have seen it but you know you know they have their own uh wants and perhaps needs uh though i guess perhaps that could be a little uh i guess up for debate if they actually needed really anything but they wanted certain things and Arabia had certain resources and such, so that could be very much uh, a benefit to them and whether or not they actually needed anything, but, you know, have a lot of stuff there that's really nice and everything. But, yeah, this is a excellent film. And um, when I first saw this, I was, like, 13. It was, like, a... There's like a month or so of about Peter O'Toole. I believe it was on the TCM. Can't be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was. You know, they're, they've are they known to do something of like that sort. So if it wasn't TCM, it was something like that where there was like some sort of like... Uh, they're just showing a lot of Peter O'Toole films. And, you know, I was getting more and more into movies. I mean, I've always been into movies, but more expanding upon... I typically really enjoyed and so yeah I had heard about Lawrence of Arabia and I was curious about seeing it so you know during this sort of like uh, tribute to Peter O'Toole they played Lawrence of Arabia amongst others of his that I saw and I still very much love to this day and he and, and watching this film for like <clears throat> about like four hours and I've actually watched this for four hours because I saw this in the theater a few years ago. <clears throat> and I didn't go to the bathroom until it was all over. And, you know, they had a TCM host, um, Ben Mankiewicz, come on <clears throat> before the movie began and then after the movie was over. So the film is like two hours and 47, or three hours and 47 minutes already. Um, but... There was like a 15 minute intermission, which will already make it more than four hours, but also given the uh, few minutes before and after the movie with Ben Mankiewicz, that even extends the runtime. So it was there for like four hours. Um, and that was an amazing experience to see on the big screen. Um, but back to being 13, um, yeah, I saw this, and I was just very enraptured with this. And I knew a Peter O'Toole before. I'd seen him here and there, and saw Ratatouille also. Which is, uh, like, <clears throat> you know, he has a voice in the film, uh, or a part in the film. And he was excellent in that film. And the film itself is just very good overall. And, yeah, he truly solidified in this film just how an excellent actor he was like, to me and of course you know i already thought he was a very good actor but watching pretty much the defining role that he basically had <clears throat> because if you say peter o'toole the first film in part people will talk about will be lawrence of arabia or at least that'll be the first that comes to mind for most people and so, just 
seeing this at like 13, I was just blown away by the story and the characters and the performances and everything. And just, I was just amazed by everything. And Peter O'Toole, and this really helped make me be a real big, a, a pretty big Peter O'Toole fan. I have almost every film he has. And I have Beckett, Wine and Winter, Ruling Class, my favorite year, and Venus also. I have other movies he has, like The Last Emperor also, but he wasn't like the lead. But these are the films that he was nominated for an Academy Award for. I just need Goodbye Mr. Chips and uh, The Stuntman, and I'll have all eight uh, Academy Award nominated performances by Peter O'Toole. He did not win an Academy Award ever in his entire life. Uh, he got an honorary Academy Award, but I think that's a bit disappointing that he never received an actual Oscar for uh, any of the performances he gave. <laughs> I think he should have won for this film. I know people will be like Gregory Peck, though, you know, in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And I will understand people's positions on that. He did a very good job but to me Peter O'Toole's performance in this was superior you know not just the fact that I love this film you know even with that aside just the performances I just love Peter O'Toole's performance more also when you know I this happens with me here and there like when a film is inspired by a true story or a real person or real events whatever the case may be I want to try and kind of learn more about it. And, you know, films are, I think, a pretty good uh, avenue and in segueing into something like whether you know some about an event or a person or maybe not much, and you want to know the truth about the uh, about said person or the events. And when researching about T. E. Lawrence as well as these sort of like the events of this film, about seeing what is accurate and what is inaccurate. One thing I noticed in, in the research about it is I, I think that Peter O'Toole really got something that any other actor probably wouldn't have gotten with this film. Um, and that's um, the people who work with him in the military and even his own brother basically noted this. They knew him a lot. They, you know, they worked with him. They were... In many cases, like, you know, they lived with him because, you know, the military stationed somewhere, so you're, like, living with all these people. But, you know, they, they knew him very well, and yet at the same time, they didn't know him. You know, he was one of those people where you could know so much about them, and yet you feel like you barely know them at all. Um, and even his own brother said that, but I'm pretty sure his brother knew him way better than you know, the, the, the people he worked with. But even then, you know, if his own brother is pretty much saying this, uh, uh, echoing the same sentiment, I think is kind of interesting. And I get that feeling with when watching this film, that after pretty much spending like four hours uh, watching Peter O'Toole as T.E. Lawrence, at the end of it all, you know quite a bit about him at least from the film's uh, perspective of course you know there are liberties of course taken but from what we gathered you know forget about reality fiction and all that but just watching the movie we feel like we know quite a bit about Lawrence and yet at the same time you know at least this is me and I can only talk for myself so I can't say this for anyone else but for, for, for me after about four hours of watching this film and him at the center of it, I feel like I also don't know him, despite knowing quite a bit about what the film is uh, presents us, and we kind of get a little insight of perhaps what's going on in his mind and what he's thinking and how he's gonna go about uh, doing certain things, you know, certain things that seem to be impossible and it's worthless, like finding somebody out in the desert uh, that has been lost finds them brings them back and uh, yeah it's just it's an amazing thing 
And this might not have ever been a conscious thing that David Lean and Peter O'Toole really wanted. But Peter O'Toole really gives a performance where that is basically the case, where you're like, yeah, this is this guy. You, you know him for a good period of time, but then at the end of it all, you go and think about all this stuff that you just saw with him, and you feel like you don't know him, despite spending many hours watching him. And the fact that real people essentially described T.E. Lawrence that way, that knew him pretty well, I think that's extraordinary. And, that's actually, and this actually is what makes... Uh, his performance in uh, as T.E. Lawrence in this film is my favorite performance of all time. Like, it's the best I've ever seen, you know. Like, yeah, I've said Gary Oldman is my favorite actor of all time, and that still stands true. And, yeah, I love his performances, like, in, as George Smiley and Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, Winston Churchill, and Darkest Hour, and, Commissioner Gordon, the Dark Knight trilogy, and all those films, and and if I were to do a list, you know, those performances would, of course, be on those lit on that list here and there. But Peter O'Toole's performance as T. E. Lawrence is my favorite film performance I have ever seen, like film or t television, man or woman, actor, actress, whatever he gave in my opinion the best performance ever uh, I know that's a big thing to say I know that it is a such a uh, such a subjective thing to say of course and that's fine I you can completely disagree with me all the way you can even say that Gregory Peck deserved the Academy Award um, but I just think just the little things that he does and the fact that I came out of this film even the first time before I even, you know, did any kind of major research about the guy and some of the stuff that we saw in the film and what was actually true and what wasn't true with the film. The fact that Peter O'Toole kind of gives that impression where you know the guy and yet at the same time you don't after about four hours of watching him. That's astonishing. Um, Albert Finney was considered, and I think he even was, believe, I believe was actually cast for a while, but then was let go for whatever reasons. Martin Brando was asked to be um, Lawrence, and he said, no, he doesn't want to spend a, like six months or so in the desert. Uh, but they filmed like, they made the film for like a, like two years so maybe it was like actually a year in the desert but it was actually two years but yeah he uh, didn't want to spend a long time there and Marlon Brando's a very good actor or was a very good actor and so was Albert Finney but uh, Peter O'Toole is just perfect Omar Sharif as Sheriff Ali is excellent as well I think both should have won the Academy Awards. They were up for for Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor. Uh, I believe the only other award it was up for and lost was um, Adapted Screenplay. Would have been cool if it won that also. Then it would have won all 10 Academy Awards it was up for. Um, but it's very rare when a film wins every Oscar <laughs> or just any award every award it's up for in a given year so but it won best picture and director and score and just a total of seven academy awards and it was deserving of all of those as well as the three it didn't win it's just my opinion of course but it is such an amazing film i love it from beginning to end Yeah, just seeing it at 13 was pretty huge for me. It was just very, you know, it really helped want me to expand my 
uh, movie uh, viewing even more. And I'm thankful for whatever channel that had that Peter O'Toole marathon on, or, or at least tribute month, not necessarily a marathon, though. Some days they had multiple uh, films <laughs> back to back, but I, for I don't think they necessarily had one for this one because of how after this one, due to the fact that it was about four hours in length. But I appreciated it, you know, be it TCM or some other channel, some other movie channel that would have tributes like that. Um, yeah. And yeah, I wish Peter O'Toole won an Academy Award, but as we've discussed and I've mentioned here, the Oscars don't really get it right quite a bit of the time. While they got it right for Best Picture and Director this year, actor, I don't think it uh, went to the right guy. Um, I think Gregory Peck should have won for A Gentleman's Agreement. Uh, I just think that, you know, that film and his performance, I I just think that's a better performance, personally, uh, by Peck. Not that he was bad in To Kill a Mockingbird, but I just think that that performance was better. Plus, also, it came out in 1947. <clears throat> and I don't know, I don't think that was a particular strong year for movies. Um, not to say there were any major bad films, but it wasn't one of those notable years where there were so many excellent films uh, coming out and it was like oh man you know there were some definitely some good films that year but uh, I think also with the competition I think he, he should have won but you know whatever be it politics be it uh, uh, some sentiment sentiment being someone's being the sentimental favorite and them winning or whatever and, and that's not to uh, take a dig at who actually won. I can't recall offhand, but I think Pe Gregory Peck should have won that year. Uh, and then Peter O'Toole could have won this year. But since this was like the first film he had really done that people knew of his existence as an actor, being that, that this was his sort of like introduction, they don't normally give Academy Awards to first timers pretty much, you know. And while, again, while he wasn't a first-timer, this wasn't his first film, for most people it was. Like, because his previous movies were pretty much only in England. I mean, if you didn't live in England, you would have never known of those films' existence until, you know, now with the internet. But uh, I love this film, you know, and I just uh, adored it. And I know I didn't really talk too in-depth about all the stuff, but then again, there's so much in this film that, uh, you know, I could go on about the plot, but even then, it's like, I, I know I would be leaving some stuff out, and I know there'd be people talking about the uh, historical accuracies and inaccuracies, and while that's all interesting and all, that's not something I want to exactly always do, because sometimes... Uh, reality of things can be such in that you're wondering why do they take so many liberties and I think in some ways you can make the argument for this film for sure but uh, yeah I'm just uh, happy with this film I love this film it is one of the greatest films of all time it has that distinction and it deserves it if you haven't seen this movie, I think you should. At least once. I know that, you know, it being about four hours in length, uh, including if you uh, pause it to go to the bathroom or whatever, you know, either before or uh, during the intermission. Um, yeah, it's just... It's just a film that I think is excellent and deserves all the recognition and uh, discussion that can come its way. Um, I think, though, that uh, if you are to watch it and you haven't before, make sure it's like a weekend that you're, like, or like some day off or a weekend or whatever. 
you know, that way you have time to watch it. That way it's not just spaced out in multiple chunks, because if that happens, then it might not be as effective as a, as the film that it is, you know. At least then you'll be able to at least be able to relax and be able to hopefully make some time out of the day to watch it and then experience it and then, you know, pause it like, you know, whenever you need to go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope I, I didn't ramble on too much about this. And I, I know this film or this video is, uh, is a bit longer than some of my last videos that isn't about new movies and stuff that I've got and discuss a bit about. But I hope you, you kind of appreciate a bit about how much I love this movie and think it's a, it is a true masterpiece and deserves all the acclaim it has received over the years. And maybe it deserves a little more. I don't know. It's my fourth favorite film of all time. I've mentioned that already. And I love watching it. And I will continue to watch it. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope all of you are doing well. I hope all of you are having a great week and a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.